Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to be here with you all this morning at Kernersville Moravian Church. To those of you worshiping with us at home, we say good morning to you as well. We are so excited to have our Boy Scouts with us this morning and to hear about what they have been doing in the community and hopefully what they have done this weekend. Um, if you uh, have heard what's been going on the last couple Sundays, we have let you know that they have been staying overnight in the cold this weekend and are starting their Scouting for Food program. So we are very excited to have you all with us this morning. I do want to bring a few announcements to you this morning. As you can see in your bulletin, it is Girl Scout cookie time. We are always excited about Girl Scout cookies. Anybody else with me on that? Yes? Oh yeah, that was a, a, a big yes. So please make sure to support our Girl Scouts this season. The preschool spaghetti luncheon will be on Sep or I'm sorry, September. I am jumping through the year. February 27th, Sunday, February 27th, will be the spaghetti luncheon to support our preschool here at church. Please make note of the widow's lunch happening February 10th and the gratitude expressed from Gary and Sylvia Lewis. And please continue to be in prayer and discernment if you would like to be on the mountain at Laurel Ridge for um, the event happening the 18th through the 20th. In your bulletins this morning, you have an insert. We will be using that insert with our scouts leading us later on in the service after the Pledge of Allegiance. So please know that if you are a scout now, or if you have been a scout, you are invited to um, lead that as well. Our prayer concerns this morning, as you can see, we still have our prayer concern list in our bulletin, but I do have some specific announcements to share with you um, with members of our congregation. Valina Ebert's brother, Agnes Hammond, entered the more immediate presence of our Lord last week. His funeral will be held on Tuesday at one o'clock in the afternoon at King Moravian with visitation to follow. There will be a graveside service following visitation. Harriet Kramer is um, beginning to transition into skilled nursing care, so please be in prayer for Harriet and her family. And we also lift up this morning Maggie Gray, who is recovering from open heart surgery this past week. So please be in prayerful and thoughtful uh, minds for these individuals and others in our congregation and those who remain on our hearts this morning. Let us join together as we hear the music of our prelude.
Please stand and join me for our call to worship this morning. Come, gather round, for God calls us to become as little children. Become as children of God. Come, show respect, for God makes a covenant with us before we can even speak. Become as children of the covenant. Worship and bow before our God who formed us in our mother's womb. We praise the God of creation who formed us all. We come before you, our God, in a time of worship and prayer to give thanks. We thank you, Lord, for the incomparable way in which you have shown your love to us. You have given us food and raiment and life and opportunity. You have led us into green pastures and beside still waters. Help us, Lord, to be a people who are prepared to be your disciples. Help us to be a people who are prepared to hear your voice, to listen to your call, and to follow in your way. Please remain standing. This is when we're going to invite everyone to join us in that insert that's in your bulletin this morning. It's not the usual way that the scouts would stand and recite the scout oath and law, but we are going to share in it because it invites us to hear some of the underpinnings behind the passages that the scouts say. And so scouts, remember we want anyone who has ever served in scouting or participated in scouts to share in the responses that are in the plain text that say scouts. For the rest of us, we're all invited to join our voices together, everyone, in the bold text in this insert. So join me. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his inheritance. My children, do not forget my teaching, but let your hearts keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and abundant welfare will they give you. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. According to your word. Without expecting a 
Be a friend to everyone, even people who are very different from you. Be polite to everyone and always use good manners. Treat others as you want to be treated. Never harm or kill any living thing without good reason. Follow the rules of your family, school, and truth. Obey the laws of your community and country. Look for the bright side of life. Cheerfully do tasks that come your way. Try to help others to be happy. Work to pay your own way. Try not to be wasteful. Use time, food, supplies, and natural resources wisely. Face difficult situations, even when you feel afraid. Do what you think is right, despite what others might be doing or saying. Keep your body and mind fit. Help keep your home and community clean. Be reverent toward God. Be faithful in your religious duties. Respect the beliefs of others. At this time, we join our voices as we pray together the liturgy for peace and justice found on page 148 in your, bullet, in your hymnals. Would you all stand and join me in peace and justice? How should we come before the Holy One and bow before God on high? God has shown what is good and what is required to do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. For you are good. For your steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter your mighty works or show forth all your praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Is not this kind of worship that pleases me, says our God, to undo the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free, and break every yoke? to share bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor, to clothe the naked and not turn from your own people. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, sick or in prison and you visited me. When did we see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and you give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you? Naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and visit you. Truly I say to you, when you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me.
joke, the clenched fist, the wicked word, if you give your bread to the hungry and relief to the oppressed, then your light will rise like the dawn. Your goodness will go before you and the glory of God behind you. God has shown us what is good and what is required to do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. As we consider these things, let us confess our sins in silence. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus said, You have heard it said, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with your neighbor, you will be liable to judgment. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Blessed are the peacemakers. you nations. Praise God, all you people. Put not your trust in rulers and mortals in whom there is no help. There will be one who will rule the, with integrity and govern with justice. One who will be like a shelter from the wind and a place to hide from the storm. One who will be like streams flowing in a desert, like the shadow of a giant rock in a barren land. One whose eyes and ears will be open to the needs of the people. Our God says, who is my servant, whom I strengthen, the one I have chosen, with whom I am pleased? I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice to every nation. He will not lose hope or courage. He will establish justice on the earth. 
He will teach us what he wants us to do. We will walk in the paths he has chosen. He will settle disputes among the nations. He will arbitrate for many peoples. We will lead our swords to plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn war anymore. We will live in peace, and no one will make us afraid. Justice will roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. And the effect of the righteousness will be peace and the result of righteousness will be quietness and trust forever. And we will abide in a peaceful habitation and secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. We will live in peace, and no one will make us afraid. God has shown us what is good and what is required. To do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. Donna Reem, and I am uh, the Scoutmaster of Troop 944. Um, I took over for Adam Moore, which I'm sure most of you are probably pretty familiar with. Um, pretty big shoes to fill, to be quite honest. Um, I've only been doing this for about six months now, so I'm still learning the ins and outs of um, this new job. Although I've been at scouting for um, almost six years now. I was a, a den leader at PAC 940 uh, down at Main Street United Methodist Church. And um, my son and I have been in the troop here for about two years. Um, so it's an honor um, to be able to mentor and be here for these uh, young men um, that we're trying to turn into uh, our next generation's leaders. Um, so we've had a lot of things going on um, since I've taken over. We took a trip to Tennessee and uh, went to Worley's Cave, which was quite an experience. It's not your normal um, caving experience where you go to a, uh, a cave that has a marked off path that's easy to walk. No, we were uh, climbing up rocks, down rocks, crawling on rocks. Um, and then we were um, we went white water rafting in 40 degree water. So, um, but the, I think the boys enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. And I think uh, the next opportunity we, that we get to go back, they're they're all ready to go back. Um, we've had um, two of our uh, guys get um, their eagle boards done, eagle boards of reviews done in the last couple of months, we have one more that will probably get his done next month and one who is getting ready to finish his Eagle project or start his Eagle project in a couple weekends. So we've got a lot of um, exciting things going on um, as um, Victoria and Pastor Christy have talked about. Friday night, we had um, all together almost 40 people between leaders and scouts here sleeping in cardboard boxes to bring awareness to homelessness in conjunction with our Scouting for Food, our annual Scouting for Food drive. Um, and those scouts came from four troops, um, Troop 940 and Girls Troop 710 from Main Street United Methodist Church, as well as Troop 779 from Sedge Garden United Methodist Church, and then troops from 944 
Um, we thought it was going to get rained out altogether, and luckily the rain stopped, but we did have to kind of, you know, move some picnic tables around, and, and a lot of them uh, slept on the uh, concrete underneath the picnic shelter, but we made it work. Because, um, let's be honest, I mean, the homeless sleep in alleyways, um, wherever they can find a place to uh, lay their heads, so um, it was uh, good for these boys to kind of see um, what the homeless go through and and to bring awareness to that and to bring awareness to food insecurity um, the food that we take up next weekend and this weekend all goes to crisis control ministry so all the food donations stay within the kernersville community we don't they don't go out of this area so they're to help people in this community that uh, don't necessarily have the means to get the food that they need in their homes um, we are certainly blessed and thankful to Kernersville Moravian Church to give us a place to be able to teach these young boys to become men and to teach them um, to be good people and to be leaders. And um, I can say that when I started this journey six years ago, I did it because I was a stay-at-home mom and I had time to do it. And uh, I didn't realize how much they were gonna change my life. And uh, I'm certainly blessed to be able to do this. And uh, for that, we're grateful to have this, um, this place. When the pandemic hit um, and these kids couldn't go to school, they were thankful to have Tuesday nights to be able to come here and have some sort of interaction with other people, with their friends, um, because they couldn't go to school and they, they they needed that interaction so it was even if it was outside even if it was 30 degrees even if it was mask on um, they still were thankful to be able to do that and I'm grateful um, so thank you guys so much for that Uh, hi, my name is Logan Allen. I completed my Eagle Board of Review in December of last year, so I'm officially an Eagle Scout. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today about my Eagle Scout project. So you heard from Miss Donna about Crisis Control Ministries, and I did my Eagle Scout project for them. I aided in the restoration and building of picnic tables for eating areas for people who need it. I also restored and cleaned all of um, Crisis Control Ministries, the outside and the inside, just because over the year of the pandemic, it had gotten to a point of where they weren't really thinking about organization and more thinking of being able to help people. And they, as long as they could help people, they didn't care what it looked like as long as people were getting the things they needed. So I saw that and I thought that it would be a better situation if we could, the Boy Scout troop could help them in cleaning and doing all these different things so that instead of it looking and feeling like a mess when they were helping people, it would be a more organized way of doing it so that they could help more people more efficiently. Uh, what I started my project in March of 2020, and the bad thing about March is right that's right when we got shut down. So it was, it was a journey to be able to do my Eagle Scout project through a pandemic and going through all these different struggles. Um, but overall, it was such a redeeming experience and I am so thankful for Scouts to be able to say that I could do this and to have really shaped me into the person that I've become. So thank you. So I'm Parker Ranson, I'm one of the other Eagle Scouts in the troop. So I recently got mine about a week ago. And to start off, I just wanted to thank all y'all who helped uh, my fundraiser coming out and supporting that. We raised over $600, which helped pay for my whole entire project. And we had some money left over to go to the beneficiary. So I just wanted to thank all y'all for coming out and supporting me for that. 
and then for my project. So I did my project, I did a helmet and batting storage box for a local baseball field over near the Kernersville Hospital. And that just kind of helped them out with their storage of bats and helmets because they really didn't have any place to put their stuff. So that kind of just helped them out a little bit. So I just wanted to thank all y'all for helping, supporting me on this journey. And I just wanted to thank the Boy Scouts for supporting me as well. Thank you all. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise, I bow down toward your holy temple, and I give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything on the day, above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the word of your hands. This is the word of the Lord. Matthew is sharing with us the words of Psalm 138 this morning. And as we enter into our time of offering this morning, again, we give thanks for those who have brought in goods for us to be able to share with the scouts for them to take out to crisis control here in Kernersville. You have another opportunity next Sunday morning. If you didn't bring things, you can bring them in and we will make sure that the scouts have them to continue to contribute to this um, effort that they are putting forth. Um, we give thanks for the work that you have heard about this morning that they have been engaged in doing, um, particularly our two Eagle Scout projects that you heard about. We also give thanks for the work of all of you, the ways that we all come together and we seek to do the good that is available to us to do. And so we continue to lift up those opportunities and we continue to dedicate ourselves in this time of offering to that good work.
Gracious God, you have enriched our lives with your presence, and we are called to respond. Help us to always seek those opportunities that present themselves before us. Work within us that we might have the eyes to see the opportunities that sometimes we overlook, or the chances to do good and new things that help us to expand our horizons. Be with each one of us gathered in this worship today, those here in this space and those gathered online, all those who come into this time offering our lives before you, O oh God. Help us to know your presence and to allow us to be instruments of your work in this world. We give thanks for the ways that you embrace us and hold us in all things, and in Christ who strengthens us to do the good work before us. Amen. So when we're reading scripture, we often find ourselves hearing stories and we go, wait a second, isn't that someplace else? Particularly in the Gospels, and this is one of those times. We're about to read Luke chapter 5, and this isn't the only telling of this encounter, but this is a different telling of this encounter than the one that we often hear, which is the more simple version of Jesus' coming and teaching and healing and doing all of these good things, right? And then he happens across Peter and Andrew and James and John and invites them to come along and become fishers of men. This is the other version of that story that we're going to hear this morning, and so I invite us to listen as we hear these words from Luke chapter 5. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. So Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but we have not caught anything. Yet you say, if you say so, we will let down these nets. When they had done this, 
They caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came. And they filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are invited to stand and join our voices in O Christian's Haste, page 618 in your hymnals. know about all of you, but when I hear one of these passages about the immediate activity that follows something that happens with Jesus, particularly the miracles, I always want to say, but what happened? Not that they followed, but what happened to all those fish and their business endeavor there on the lake shore and those boats? Now, you got to assume that there probably actually were other workers But you can't help but hear a story like that of Jesus and sort of say, I wonder, did they just give all those fish, that miraculous haul, to all those who had been crowding around to hear Jesus teach? Is that what happened? Did the the other workers, did they they sell off those fish and, and do something good? Who knows, right? We don't get those answers in Scripture. We get what Scripture gives us, right? 
but there are certainly plenty of questions that come up. But there's some good things to pay attention to in the text itself. Jesus is here surrounded by crowds at the lakeshore, so therefore it must be far enough into the day that folks are out and about in the community already, getting their days started, and perhaps not just getting their days started, but far enough into their days that they might be able to pursue this wandering prophet preacher that is Jesus and the way that people have begun to embrace him and seek him out. But that also tells us that the dawn cleanup chores from these fishermen's overnight work is not yet done because they're still there cleaning their nets. So you got to assume that these guys are tired. They're ready for their work day to end. They're ready to go home and probably take a nap. Sure, the boat there offers Jesus space to teach for him to be heard. But that what is it that compels these tired fishermen who are there on the shore cleaning up their nets from their night of work? What is it that invites them to invest effort to help Jesus out? Are they just as curious about what Jesus might have to say as the crowds that have been pursuing Jesus? And then you've got to ask the question of the abundance of what they do catch. That this is really the mark that something different has happened. Something has changed. And Simon begins to recognize that that catch is certainly something bigger than just an in-kind exchange. Y'all helped me out by getting me out away from the crowd on the shore so that they could hear me and I could teach. And so I'm going to give y'all a good catch of fish to pay you back, right? There's more than an in-kind exchange of goods and services that have transpired here. And so Simon responds to Jesus in a way that suggests he does not believe himself to be worthy of God's work coming so close to his life. Miles, what do you say? But I'm a sinner. I'm not, I'm not good enough to receive this, Jesus. Why is this coming to me? Maybe it... It's even that Simon is unsure about the ways that God is about to upend his life. And that's what happened, right? After the biggest haul of their fishing business, a moment that could easily bring in the sort of prosperity that many, both then and today, might long for, they completely walk away from that life to pursue the journey of discipleship with Jesus. In that moment, they're so amazed, and their amazement helps them to recognize the possibilities of discipleship in a way that they simply can't turn their eyes away from. That catch of fish lights a fuse in them for discipleship. Now, I think you might all agree that Simon's reluctance is a little bit like what we heard Victoria preach on last Sunday that so often in our lives we say, I can't. But Jesus is inviting Simon in this moment to hear, I can. I can walk away from this. I can see a different world. I can follow. And it is this I can moment that transforms everything in this story. It's easy for us to do the same thing that we hear Simon do. We've just been out here at this for hours, Jesus. How will trying it again, dropping those nets again, give us a different result? Perhaps we'd even expand on Simon's time frame, right? Whether it's hitting a sticking point or a hurdle in finishing a merit badge or a rank advancement, right, guys? We've had those moments where we bumped up against that wall and we just can't get over it and we don't see the way through, but we keep going. And for us as a congregation, well, we also have those moments as a church family where we recognize that we need to do some rebuilding of community or some refocusing of our priorities. We find ourselves saying, I've tried that already, and here's where I got stuck. So how will this attempt, this situation, this circumstance be any different I know that I've sat on more than one church committee over the years, and I do mean years, going back to being a teenager in the church, where I've hit this brick wall. We as a group have hit a brick wall, 
and we felt that there was no way forward. But the thing is, what we hear in this story is, it is different on this attempt. For Simon, it is different this time around with Jesus on this boat with him. It's different because this encounter with Jesus has changed something. It's different because they are dropping those nets at an unusual time of day. Perhaps it was even different because the right opportune moment has finally arrived. The right set of conditions have fallen into place because our God of unexpected and surprising abundance has shown up. Now, most of us have known seasons in our lives in which every possible thing we could imagine to go wrong has gone wrong. Or at least we've had enough hard upheavals of our lives. We've watched this unsettling of our life take place such that we are fearful and we can only imagine the worst that might yet be to come. Sometimes it might feel like it might take more courage, patience, and fortitude than we can even imagine having in order for us to move through it. Jesus drew those crowds together there on the lake shore because the people who were crowding around him had a feeling that they were, had a feeling, had been feeling that way, that lost, that we need something more. They were looking for something. And Jesus, in the words that he was conveying, in the healings that he was offering, in the ways that he interacted with them, was offering them a different view of life, a kind word, A healing presence that changed things. So what might we find if we cast our nets differently, just as Jesus asked these fishermen to do? They invited Jesus and his different view. A view that saw the possibilities of life through the eyes of God's love and came up with a different set of answers. Even if it seemed like Jesus was asking Simon to do what he and his partners had already spent hours doing in the dark hours of the early morning. The view, the orientation had changed. They invited Jesus into the boat. They invited the possibility of a different outcome. They dropped those nets at a different time, inviting the possibilities of something happening in a different way. How might a shift in the way we are seeing each other or our situations allow us to see different results. Without facing our fears, sometimes without being willing to stumble a little bit, sometimes we're even coming trembling, sick to the pit of our stomachs, without these moments where we abandon ourselves to the possibilities of what God is doing, abandon ourselves to jump off the cliff into the arms of God, then the only other thing that we can do is to keep armoring ourselves up, repeating ourselves, getting stuck in self-protection, and we whine at anyone who's different from us. If we're not willing to jump off of the cliff into an abandonment in God's love, we're going to stay stuck. And when we let go of being stuck, when we abandon the things that we're holding on to out of fear and anxiety. When we do that, then we're able to move past it. When we find ourselves stuck, we're doing exactly what Simon attempts to do in this story. He's hesitating to drop those nets once again, saying to Jesus, we've already tried it. But are we willing to learn from the ways that we weren't successful before? Can we recognize that Jesus is in the boat with us and to use new opportunities, new moments to engage the opportunities before us differently and be open to different outcomes? So this morning I invite us, as we go into the week and the month and the year before us, let us face our fears, our tasks, our worries in this life, and seek to find ways to abandon ourselves into the arms of God that we find with one another. I have a feeling my scouts over here 
have had a few of those experiences where when you hit those walls, were you together able to cross them? I'm getting a few head nods. Can I get a yes? Just maybe. Have y'all seen that happen? Yep. And I think the rest of us, just like these boys, have seen it happen too. So let us go into the week ahead holding that trust and giving those opportunities a chance. I invite us into prayer this morning as we reach the end of our service. To you, O oh Lord, we call out for help. For you are our rock and our fortress. You are the best opportunity before us. You welcome us with open arms like the prodigal is welcomed by his father. Listen to the prayers that we lift up. Help to rescue those who find themselves under the power of injustice or cruelty in their lives. And help us to cleanse our hearts of the desires to harm one another or to create distance and separation. Protect and nurture the young. Care for those who are just learning the promises of your constant presence in their lives. Keep us all safe and help cover us with your love in all things. Let your mercy to surround all those who are old, especially those whose health or mind or family fail them. Let your strength lift all of us up, but especially them. And may your praises be found on their lips. Stand with all those who seek to serve you faithfully and help us when we encounter those roadblocks and challenges to know you are still there with us and are holding us as we navigate new ways to cross them. Give us steadfast hope by the power of your Holy Spirit and let us find ways to celebrate the good work we see you working amongst us. Revive and comfort those who face trouble and calamity. We especially pray for your healing presence and your care and compassion with Maggie Gray and her family, for Harriet Kramer and Sheila and Steve Lennon as they continue to care for her in this change, moment of change, for the many others that we lift up in prayer from our prayer list. Show your faithfulness this day to those who face death or walk in the shadow of grief. This day we especially lift up Valina and Steve Ebert as they grieve Valina's brother, Angus. We ask this day that you strengthen your people, that we might continue to sing your praises even when we find ourselves surrounded by darkness and watch over all the souls who rest in you. God, you are our rock, and we call to you now and always, trusting in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. I invite us to stand and sing together hymn 443. May God's love be fixed above you.
And now, brothers and sisters, may the Lord's presence rise and shine upon you in this day. May you go forth in the world knowing that God's presence seeks to bless you and comfort you in all things. And may the countenance of our Lord be lifted upon you and bring the deepest of peace into your lives. Thank you.